Do you want to meet the great business men and women who are the backbone of this country? Welcome to Industry Leaders. I'm your host, Janine Alice, founder of Boost Juice Bars and Shark Tank Investor. Randall to Thank industry you. leaders. So look, travel's been a part of my world and my life. I am a Sagittarian, so I just spend my whole youth traveling. So I love this space. But I also know, having friends involved with Flight Centre, I know the changes in this space that have happened quite dramatically over the last few years. So tell me about your journey and how you got this business started. Yeah, sure. Travel's one of those really exciting and sort of sexy industries. and. And we sort of, our journey commenced with seeing an opportunity. I, previously I'd, I'd ran and floated sort of the largest privately owned resort group on behalf of someone else. Um, it's now called Mantra. Um, and so I had that sort of foray into travel and then I saw some opportunities to create some different models within what is essentially a very established and competitive sort of, sort of market. So yeah, I saw some opportunities to do things a little bit differently and, and instead of constantly doing that with someone else, I decided to go out and go on my own and create my own business. The travel game is tough. It is highly competitive. How do you stand out and how are you different? Well, our difference is that uh, where a lot of companies are focusing on trying to offer everything there is in a destination or a flight or a hotel room in case the customer wants it, what we've done is kind of focused on building the holiday in a box. So it's kind of everything they need and we've sort of pushed aside and it's as much what we don't sell that makes our packages you know different we don't sell uh, the resorts that we don't love and whether that's three four or five star uh, there's a best of breed version of all of those things and so we kind of bundle that with the best tours and create really the more convenient easier way for the customer to buy you know a really incredible holiday so do you send your team to all of these locations so you can eyeball them yourself to know, or your, you or your team self to make sure that they are what they say they are. Yes, and so you know everything we sell we've stayed in and that used to be me and my other uh, co-founder at the time but now uh, we'll have a team that do that but yeah and they certainly it takes about a year for us to train someone in that area to be proficient enough to to put my fussy lens over yeah over what the resort has to offer, um, depending on the budget and every other aspect. So what does the hotel or the flights or anything else connected with the travel, what does it have to have to become an approved by you guys? It has to represent the, the best of breed, we call it. Yeah. Um, again, it's probably, it's more of a t term used with animals, but um, for us it's the, for example, not all four stars are created equally. Yes. Um, you can have a four star because the star rating system allows you to put a hook on a back of a door and get an extra star rating. So it's a points based system. So uh, for it to be approved, it has to represent the best version of, of that. So for airlines, for example, there's a lot of great airlines. Uh, we like to favour national carriers where, where we can because mm -hmm. the holiday starts from when you get on the plane. If yeah. you're, uh, you're travelling you know, one of the, uh, like a low cost airline or any other sort of airline, non-national, then you could be travelling anywhere. But yeah. for us, we like to deal in national carriers and full service airlines, because that's how we like to fly. Mm. On your website, you say you're the Australia's leading travel innovator. Sure. Now, why are you an innovator? I guess our whole philosophy as a business is to, you know, we're only interested if we're making a difference. So that concept of cast your net very wide, include all the offers that are available in a destination in case a customer might like it, that's the area where we're different. Mm. So as a uh, customer, so I'm a big traveller, I'm actually yes. doing research right now to go to take my family to Japan. Yes. And the glut of information that I'm trying to get through to understand which is, and it's overwhelming. It is. Because there is so many accommodation, there's so much choices of tour guides. So. Is your package going, okay, if you want to go to Japan, Janine, here is the airline I recommend. Sure. Here are the things you should go and see because yes. I've seen them and they're great. I understand you've got kids coming with you or not kids coming with you. So this is a package that would suit you. Yes. And this is the cost. Yeah, look, choice is great, but it's also confusing. Yeah, it is. If you're not an expert on something, it takes a lot of time to become an expert. 
And for us, we go and become experts at each of the destinations that we sell before we start selling them. And then we, we bring that expertise into a handful, not a, not a thousand packages of different hotels and resorts. And there's certainly some people who won't have exactly what they want pre-built within the package. Mm. Um, but we can add those things. What they are gonna find is a simpler, more convenient, uh, some, somewhere they can trust when they're looking to say, hey, I haven't been to somewhere like New Caledonia or I haven't been to the Maldives mm. or I, mm. I haven't been, I don't know, I'm not an expert. You know, it takes a lot of time to do the research and what we do is do all that. By the time a customer sees the finished product and that finished product can take us quite some time to, to build. If we're not happy with what's in destination, the level that we go to to ensure that it is what we would expect or what I would expect for myself or my family, uh, that's what we build into every single package. So Now, sometimes that's difficult because you go, okay, I want to make sure I give them that experience, but it might be cost prohibitive. Sure. So how do you manage that balance? Because you go, oh, I want this, but gee, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna make absolutely zero money on this tour. Sure. What we do is we, we create the package that will suit the type of person that could afford that package, for example, three, four or five stars. So yep. we won't put a, a $5,000 experience on a three star resort no. package. So no. we kind of marry up the elements of each of the elements of the package to suit the budget of the demographic or mm -hmm. the market that we're looking to try and the customer we're looking to try and sort of please. So if you take someone like Fiji, for example, if you go to Fiji, there's some wonderful things about Fiji and there's lots of things that, you know, you'd go to another destination for if you wanted shopping or nightlife or, you know, Fiji isn't right for that. Um, so for Fiji, uh, also I think if you don't get out to one of the islands of Fiji, the reasons people go, the real reasons, are that the people are really friendly mm -hmm. yeah. and it has some amazing natural beauty and wonder in, out of the islands in particular. But a lot of people end up staying on the main coral coast mm -hmm. or the main Denarau coast and, and that isn't really idyllic Fiji. No, it's not. So we wouldn't sell a package and we don't sell a package to Fiji that doesn't include at least a day trip to one of our favourite islands. And it, it's that level of, uh, I'd rather not give someone Fiji than have them not experience the best Fiji has to offer. Yeah. That's kind of the... Yeah. Uh, that's kind of the DNA, yeah. So you've been doing the business for about 13 years? Yes. So, God, how old were you when you started? Um, actually, I had my, well, I was 30. So, yeah, 30. So I turned 43 this year. Oh, well done. Thank you. <laughs> that's a good milestone. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting, isn't it? 30 is a, a mark that a lot of people sort of start to go, okay, bugger, I'm going to take life a bit more seriously. So why travel? Um, I'd been working in travel um, and I'd been the GM of the biggest private resort group. You know, I'd seen opportunities both from distribution from a resort perspective and from a customer perspective. So I guess I've always had a desire to make a difference. And once I picked travel as an industry, then that then enabled me to sort of see those opportunities or the gaps in the market. How did you go with dealing with staff that are older than you, potentially in the business a lot longer? How did you work through those challenges? The challenges for me, I've never had, you know, knowledge is more, and, and you know, if you know your craft, so I know my craft very well. Mm. And so I've never had age as any sort of metric for me. And, and even in how I remunerate my staff, it's more about value and output and, you know, than it is about uh, how old you are or how long you've been there for, for me. It's about, you know, output and value equals return. Uh, you know, that's sort of the transaction. I headed up the management rights or the hotel industry when the GST came out and I was, there was no one that was anywhere short of double my age at the time. Um, I would have been 25 years old, maybe less, 23 years old. So, yeah, I've never had, it's never been something I've looked at or worried about or I still don't think about it. Um, as a factor. So as a leader in your game, how do you get your juice? Where do you get your knowledge? I do research, but my idea of research is more uh, trying things and seeing how they go. So the ideas for us come consistently from, at the moment, the core ideas remain the same. Let's just create the best holiday package with the best things to do that showcase the best the destination has to offer and only sell them. Once that's your kind of foundation, then to continue to grow for us, and we'll grow, we grew by more than 45% this year. So to continue to grow uh, at significant rates, now all we need to do is propagate that further and wider. You've increased your business by 45%. Yes. That's, and it's a business that's been going for 13 years. Yes. Have you done something significantly different? Or, I mean, what's that quantum leap? Because that is, that is 
is incredible. Yeah, look, it, it, it was we, we grew for the first eight years at 50 to 100% every year. Yep. And then we hit some software hurdles. So uh, our systems couldn't keep up with our ability to make the phones ring <laughs> and to bring the customers in. So the reason we grew so much this year was that we had some system capabilities that right. we launched that allowed us to grow and, and we've got a few stages of them to come. So that's, I already know what our growth will be over the next three years, just based on those system capabilities enabling us to do so. But during the last 13 years, there's been times when things I'm sure haven't gone to plan. Sure. Can you tell me a time when it hadn't gone to plan and what did you do to overcome it? How long have you got? Yeah, no, <laughs> I'm go just, for I'm it. Kidding, I'm Give kidding. me some, it's travel stories. Yeah, there's some is. juicy ones. So there's challenges along the way. We, an airline called Air Australia, that we, we were the biggest booker of that airline. It, it, it's went, it didn't go down, didn't crash, but it stopped trading. Hmm. And I didn't realise I'm only an agent, but under the uh, credit card rules, we were responsible for all the thousands and thousands of guests we'd booked. So, oh wow! That was the first year in our life we didn't grow, and in fact, we, you know, commercially, we were right on the edge. I had to put all the money from my house back into the company, and that was about a, a seven or eight years in. So it was a lot of uh, it was a real corporate challenge. So I had a real decision to make, and that was, do I protect the company or do I protect the brand? and protecting the company. There were ways at which, you know, I just wanted to make sure I did the right thing by the customers so that I'd have something afterward. So 45% increase. Yes. So what's the future of Ignite? It's international. At the moment, we only sell from Australia and, yeah. and, and we sell packages under My Queensland Holiday, under My Hawaii. So we, we sell a lot of domestic, mostly international. But for us, we don't send customers from other countries to other countries. We okay. only send Australians places. Right. So for us, we in the very near future, we'll be launching out of New Zealand, which is pretty close. Yep. And then Canada and the order will be Canada, the US, UK, South Africa. We've researched these markets and none of these markets have the type of model that we run here. Because it's interesting, isn't it? Because I, I would speak to friends and they go, okay, I do a walking tour yes. and my, I do it from a, a UK travel agency. Sure. Or, there is no longer barriers or no longer borders. I know flight centres early days, they were getting flight cheap flights from here and you weren't allowed to. And now, now it's fairly you can do anything. You can. So how do you then take an Australian-based business or yes. an Australasian-based business and then say to the Americans or the, the POMs, yes. the English, um, let's you know, use me? For us, it's in the, the consumer side. So the consumers there are being served the same sort of offers that the consumers here were served before we created our business. Right. So once consumers see this style of offer, that is more convenient, that includes more value, that has all this curation level that no one else has. Once consumers see that, I believe that that's the universal language of consumers. I think everyone wants more for less. I think everyone wants to be almost- They want value. Yeah, they do. They want good value. It's not about yeah. the cheapest room. No, it's, it's not. not about the lowest price point. It's the thing we look forward to. It's much more than that. And, and I think that it transcends nations. You know, we curate to that level and again, by only selecting a handful of things to sell that are the best things, then we, we, we create that best best destination experience possible. So I've got 10 questions I want to throw at you. Ooh, just, okay, should just, I be nervous? Oh, totally, <laughs> totally nervous. <laughs> <laughs> if you're having a dinner, you can have any guest you want, who would it be? Richard Branson. Yep, why? Just, you talk innovation and you talk someone that thinks outside the box, you know, that's, I, I, we try and we, we do our best at that, but you know, that's a whole nother level. So yeah, plus opportunity for me. I think there's things that he's not doing that, you know, potentially we could work together on. So twofold, sorry, yeah. sorry for a twofold answer, but that's no, it. No, I think <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. a tenfold answer. What's your view on life balance? It's very important. Uh, you know, I had a, I lost a son, um, and until that point, I didn't have a very <laughs> balanced view on life balance. Um, but no, it, it's critical. I think life isn't about the end result. It's, it's about the journey itself. And the journey is every day, it's today, it's tomorrow. It's, you have to you know, not only enjoy what you do, but you have to make sure that all the people coming along the ride with you, all those people you're lucky enough to have in your life, that those people get that same level of enjoyment out of you know, being part of life as what, as what you get. So. So how do you manage to ensure that 
from your life experiences go, I'm, I'm going to be present. How do you do that and still create a business, an incredibly successful business? Sure. Everything's a compromise. So well, I was growing much faster when I was less life work balance focused. So I think you need to, if it's a priority, and for me again, I had that life changing experience that made it a priority. But if it's a priority for you, then your decision becomes easier. Easy, yeah. And for, for me, life balance is important as success is important. And, and you know, everyone's measure of success is different. Yes. My success, I can't have it without life balance. One of the ways that I've done better at that is I employed an expensive CEO. Like it was a good decision. It was not a good decision for the hip pocket initially, but yeah. it's a good decision for life work balance. Yes. So I think, you know, Profit isn't the ultimate goal, it's one of the goals. It's, you know, again, that, that journey and enjoying it along the way. Um, I, again, I, I still work five days a week, but I have, you know, when I go home, I, I absolutely am home. Yes, I always often say to people when, they, when they're starting off is, you know, who should be my next employee that I have in the business yes. after myself? And I always say it's a PA. Yes. And the reason being is that if you think in your day, the minutiae that you, that you have to handle, that you could pass on to someone else, you're actually physically giving yourself 30% more time in your day yes. by just not doing, being on the a hold, Telstra, on, hold for Telstra for 20 minutes. Sure. <laughs> no, no, I 100% agree. Very early on, I put a PA on um, for that very reason, because I worked out that the things, it's it's like, you know, I actually like mowing the lawn, but I get someone to do it. Yeah. It's because that time, you know, if I've got the time, I'll do it. But if I've got other things, you know, I can better employ that time. Yes. But my PA's KPI is to free up 25% of my time. That's her KPI. Yes. And every week we have a little, or every time we have a review, we sit down and it's an anything goes set up. Um, but like anything, I was very open at the start when I hired. Um, and so we made the grounds of the things that I, I needed and what she or he was happy to do. And once we got that sort of sorted, everything else has become good. But her KPI, 25% of my time yeah. is freed up and Great. she smashes it. Yeah. What surprised you most about being in business? Um, probably just about how much you think about it all the time and, and how disciplined you have to That's be not true. to, you know? It's every, if you don't watch it, or for me, if I don't watch it, it's every waking minute and some sleeping minutes, you know? So, um, and that's again, not fair on the family. So for me, what surprised me was, I thought I was, as an employee, because I started life as an employee and then work moved on. I thought I was giving everything I had. And I progressed and was CFO at a very young age and all that of a public company, floated one on the stock market. So I was going okay. But it wasn't until I got my own business that I actually understood what 100% was and just how, you know, and I thought I was passionate and I was. I was by anyone's standard, I was passionate. But that level of passion when it's when it's yours and you can make a big difference like yeah. this, yeah. it's it's so empowering. And, and yeah. you're the final call too. There's something about yeah. the final call. You answered a no, well, it's, you answered Everything's my responsibility, there's no question. Yeah, yeah. good, the bad and the ugly. That's, uh, that's, that's all my fault. That's on me, that's on me, so. <laughs> that bloody credit card is my fault. Yeah, it was my fault, yeah. <laughs> I finished this sentence. A great leader is a great leader is a great human being because they have to be compassionate. They have to have respect um, to get respect. And I think you know, I think that moral compass is very important. What are you most proud of in business? For me, I'm most proud of uh, being able to maintain those foundation elements that that we started with when there was four Kelly Temp staff in a in a little office that we lasted you know six months in. So we've been able to maintain all of those core kind of foundation elements, like being dynamic and like wanting to create kind of everybody w walking away with a win from dealing with us. Yes. Those foundation elements, the fact we haven't compromised those as we've got into, you know, from small to say medium yep. size, um, that's probably what I'm most proud of. I was worried we'd lose that. and I was wor I'd worried we'd lose that ability to jump on a great opportunity straight away. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we, we, we've managed to maintain it, so that's probably what I'm most proud of. Yeah. And what are you most proud of personally? Probably on the same front. I, what's important to me is that, that is, is that we're making a difference and that I feel like we're making a difference. And, and you know, the bigger difference we can make, the better. So for me, uh, that's still maintain the driver. It's, there's people have financial goals and, and you know, I, I certainly have financial aspirations, but they've never been one of my goals. For me, what I'm probably most proud of is that I still define success the same way, and that is 
just maximising the potential that we have that, and maximising the difference we can make to our industry. And those things for me personally, that's still what drives me. Even though you know I've got more money now and those sorts of things, it hasn't become, it's still not about money, it's still about those other things. Yeah, and that's why you're success. There's a book written on you, it's your bio. What's, oh. the, what's the title? What's the title? The title would be Waste Nothing, Enjoy Everything, No Regrets. Ooh, good title. I don't know where that came you from. You better remember that. <laughs> I'm going to write that down, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, finally, what advice would you give someone starting out in their own business? I think probably, and again, this comes from personal experience, you know, for me, We've never assumed that the way things are being done now is the best way they can be done. So take travel, it's established, take any established industry, just because it's established, just because there's massive people in it, you know, keep your eyes open to what could be done better. Um, you know, my advice is that don't assume the way things are being done is the best way they can be and opportunities will flow quick and fast if you take that approach. Mm. Randall, thank you very much. You are a good leader and a great human being. <laughs> well, I hope so. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Thank you very much. Awesome. Join us next time when we continue our quest to share the knowledge of Australia's best business leaders and entrepreneurs on Industry Leaders.